Thank you, Chair Pitts. We're live. Okay, thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to today's meeting of the Board of Community Services. Welcome board members and members of the public. Uh, today, uh, we have myself, Chair uh, Logan Pitts. Uh, with us, we also have board member Carolina Spence, board member Carol Quant, board member Paul Castillo, and board member Madonna Cruz. No vice chair right now, but um, we will be taking care of that in the future. Uh, thank you everyone for being there. And let me just also say our new board member, Paul Castillo, by the way. Uh, we have our hosts, Julie Guzzi and Shelly McClure helping today. The hosts will coordinate comments from the public, assist during the meeting and take notes for any follow-ups. Uh, panelists and presenters, please silence your cell phones and keep microphones muted if not speaking. Members of the public joining this meeting will have their cameras off and microphones muted. If they're phoning in to join the meeting and you choose to speak during the public comment portion of the agenda, for privacy concerns, we will re rename you caller and only show the last four digits of your phone number. And the city of Santa Rosa is committed to providing a safe and inclusive environment free from disruption and we will not tolerate hateful speech or actions. Everyone is expected to participate respectfully, or if necessary, the meeting will end immediately. Please be nice to each other. Host, will you please explain how public comments will be heard at today's meeting? Thank you, Chair Pitts. At each agenda item after the item has been presented, the chair will ask the board members for comments or questions, and then immediately following after, this item will be open for public comments. If there are raised hands prior to the public comment, the host will lower all the hands until the public comment item is open to all. Once the chair has called for public comment, the public may then raise their hand if they wish to speak on the specific agenda item being discussed. Those joining by phone may dial star nine to raise your hand. The host will then call on those who have raised their hands in the order they appear on the screen. All public comments will be heard based until there are no more hands raised. Each public comment is limited to three minutes and a courtesy timer will appear on the screen. Any email comments that were received by the deadline will have been included and uploaded to the agenda prior to the start of today's meetings and emails received are not read into the record. Thank you, host. With that, I call this February 22nd, 2023 meeting of the Board of Community Services to order at 4.03 p.m. And hopefully for the last time, I'll be reading this. Pursuant to Government Code Section 54953E and the recommendation of the Health Officer of the County of Sonoma, Board of Community Service members will be participating in today's meeting via Zoom webinar. Board members and staff are participating from remote locations and are practicing appropriate social distancing. Members of the public may view and listen to the meeting as noted on the city's website and on the agenda. Host, may we have the roll call? Thank you, Chair Pitts. Please respond when I call your name. Chair Pitts. I'm here. Board Member Boccalioni. You are muted. Board Member Castillo. Present. Thank you. Board Member Cruz. Present. Board Member Spence? Here. Thank you. Board Member Quant? Here. And for verbal, Board Member Boccalioni? Guido, can you hear us? We can't hear you. You got to hit that uh, unmute button. Okay. Um, uh oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let the record reflect that all the board members are present. Okay. We uh, did have Guido there, and we will let the record reflect that. He should be coming back any second. Um, but that's okay. We have a quorum. So we're going to move forward um, on to agenda item three. There's the public comments on non agenda matters. 
So I'd like to open the floor for any public comments on the non-agenda matters. This is a time when any person may address the board on matters not listed on this agenda, but are within our subject matter. Uh, host, do we have any public comments? We do not have any hands raised at this time. Okay, wonderful. We will move on to item four, the approval of the minutes. Uh, does anyone have any edits or corrections to the minutes from January 25th? Okay, I'm not seeing any hands raised or any edits suggested. So we will have those approved as submitted. And moving on to number five, Deputy Director Santos, please give us your report on upcoming events and accomplished events. Thank you, Chair Pitts. And so everyone should have a copy of our um, list of upcoming and accomplished events. I wanted to highlight an upcoming event. It's our Arbor Day event on March 11th. Uh, it's gonna be a fantastic year to plant trees. We've had a ton of rain. So if you, this is the time, if you haven't yet to uh, participate in one of our park activities, um, and we've got the link there for you to sign up or just um, come by. We'd love to see you for that. It's going to be a great event. And it's going to be at Northwest Community Park this year. And then for accomplished events, I just wanted to um, highlight the our last Park a Month event at A Place to Play, another really successful event with uh, 37 volunteers. And we had um, our seven to 10, you know, about 10 city staff out there at any one time spreading bark and um, pulling weeds and just helping with the general clean of the parks. So it was very successful. And that's the end of my report. Great, thanks, Jen. And is the Arbor Day the normal start time of Saturday at nine? Correct, yes, Saturday at nine, 9 a.m. to 12, yes. Wonderful, um, great, thank you. And will you please move on to agenda item six and provide any director updates? Sure, I've got I've got a few updates, so bear with me. Uh, first, I wanted to congratulate you, Chair Pitts, for being recommended to be our chair yet again uh, from the mayor. So congratulations, we look forward to that this year. And then I also wanted to um, uh, second your uh, appreciation for Paul Castillo being on our new as our new board member appointed by Member Okrepke of Council uh, District 6, Council District 6, which is the Coffee Park area. And so welcome. We're looking forward to you joining, I mean, being here with us and being in person uh, soon enough. And then um, also uh, Council Member McDonald, representing District 3, uh, appointed Omar Lopez to fill the vacant seat left behind from uh, when Board Member Spillman retired from the board recently. So um, when everyone's here, um, hopefully next month, we will have a full board, which is um, fantastic. I'm excited to, to see that. Uh, and also, uh, you may have been hearing us hint around, we will be um, in person next month for our next board meeting. So um, it's we have the Finley Community Center Cypress Room, where we used to meet previously, set up. We've had a couple dry runs. It's looking really, really good. Um, so we are looking forward to seeing you all in person next month. Uh, we also sent out a notification from, um, from the city about board members who um, have special needs to participate remotely. There are some options for you to occasionally um, remote in as needed, although um, from March forward, there is no opportunity to participate remotely uh, continuously. So those remote participations need to be for special reasons. And there's a whole la laundry list of uh, things you can and can't do, but uh, it's definitely worth your while to read that document that was sent to you all. Uh, it has really, uh, really great instructions on what's available. And myself and Shelly are always here if you do have additional questions on <clears throat> how you can participate if you, for whatever reason, can't make it. But there are very distinct reasons that um, you should not be attending and need to be participating offsite. There's also a potential requirement for you to list your physical location and make it open to the public wherever you're at. So um, just keep those things in mind as you're rolling forward. And I, I know there's been a bit of convenience too with participating remotely, 
Although for some of us, it, we're very much ready to be back in person. Um, just keep that in mind um, as we're going forward. I'm really looking to forward to being back in person, but also uh, want to be careful as we, as those of you who do need to uh, participate occasionally remotely, take a look at those uh, sets of rules there. Um, the other thing is I wanted to announce that the restaurant and event center at Bennett Valley Golf Course has come up with a new name. It's called Iron and Vine Restaurant and Event Center. Um, so iron for like a uh, golfing iron and the, the vine um, are our local wineries, et cetera. And so uh, we are going to have a grand opening coming up soon. We should be receiving that information um, uh, soon, but it, we're going to look at March 7th, starting at four o'clock as a uh, grand opening, and that invitation will be coming out to the board members soon, and hopefully I will see you there. Um, but why wait? Go ahead. Feel free to uh, visit anytime you want or book an event anytime. You don't need to wait for a grand opening to go check it out, and I know some of you already have, so thank you. Uh, on another note, we have bus been busy today and we'll be busy tomorrow interviewing for our admin technician position. This is the position that Elisa Rawson held um, when she left our department last year for a higher, uh, higher opportunity with the police department. And so we are uh, finally able to do those interviews and we hope to have that position filled um, in the coming month. And it's a really critical position for us, helping with budgets, et cetera. So we're excited to have that position back. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention tonight is that there's been some internal discussions about the Recreation and Parks Department name and the option to change the name to align with the nationwide use of the name Parks and Recreation. And so I, I just wanted to announce that there's been some internal discussions, including the city manager's office about that. And absolutely no decisions have been made on how to move forward or when to move forward with that or, or if we should, but it is being discussed. So I wanted to bring that up. If you are hearing that out and about that is uh, definitely something that's happening. And I know the city manager's office is interested in discussing it again, and I'll, I'll keep you posted. And I'll certainly be working with uh, Chair Pitts uh, to discuss any details of that. And I Mostly wanted to bring it up tonight because you'll be hearing Emily's presentation about the board ordinances that will have some effect on that. So keep that in mind as you're listening through all the information for there. Um, just a couple more. <laughs> I had a few tonight. I also wanted to, you know, draw out your attention to um, an award we recently received. We received a $5 million grant award uh, to make improvements to Martin Luther King Park, and we are so excited. There's no matching requirement. It's a $5 million um, grant from the um, de State Department of Housing and Community Development's Infill Infrastructure Grant Program. We call it the IIG grant. Um, it's a fantastic uh, opportunity for us to provide an enhanced park to the community that is benefiting um, from some of the state fundings for housing in the area as well. Um, MLK, we're looking at updating the sports field. So it'll be a multi-purpose sports field, all weather lighted sports field, which has been something strongly desired by that community at that park. We'll be updating the uh, playground, which is hidden away now for those of you that have been there. It's, it's a little, it's hard to see it sometimes or find it in the park. So we're gonna be bringing that out into the forefront and really just overall enhancing the restroom and pathway connections and. Uh, providing a really big update to the park. So we'll be doing a, uh, some community engagement coming up and we'll keep you posted. We're developing a, a schedule right now for how to reach out to the community to get an updated master plan and uh, get those improvements done. So we're really excited. We've put in many, many, as you might remember, many, many grant applications for uh, Martin Luther King Park. And this is the best one we could have gotten for this park. It's It's fantastic. So looking forward to that. And um, last but not least, I also wanted to thank our amazing park maintenance team who last night spent the better part of uh, late afternoon and into the evening uh, handling tree calls. So our park maintenance team is responsible for cleaning up uh, downed trees in the right of way, so roadways, pedestrian pathways, et cetera, during storms. And so they were out doing that last night. Some of you might have remembered the windstorm last night in Santa Rosa. So a uh, big thank you to them. 
uh, you never know when it's going to happen. And, um, and we get the call to, to stay late and, and work overtime and work through that. So um, they're amazing. I just wanted to call out a big thank you to them. Um, and then with that, I also wanted to take an opportunity to turn it over to our Recreation Deputy Director, Jeff Tibbetts, who's going to give us an update on registrations. Thank you, Jen. Um, yeah, I just wanted to uh, give a an update to, to the Board of Community Services and, and take this public forum. Um, spring summer registration is uh, one of the biggest days of the year for recreation and parks and um, all the summer camps and programming that we have that takes place um, and registration for it. And unfortunately this year, um, there was such an overwhelming uh, <laughs> action that took place in, in registration. We had um, over 4,000 online transactions in the first two hours. Um, it was overbearing for our uh, vendor. Um, it created some issues that ended up shutting down our online registration system. Um, we then found out that there were some merchant issues and, and some holds on some incorrect holds on people's credit cards. Um, nothing fraudulent, nothing like that, just technical errors of things that got sent through um, that were putting holds on people's credit cards. So because it was creating that issue, we kept our online registration down for a week until we felt comfortable everything had been resolved and we could reopen it. So while usually this is the time of year we get to brag about all the positive statistics um, of that registration, right now we're a little behind on collecting that data, although I can tell you it was a very success, despite all those issues, it was an incredibly successful um, registration period. All three of our, our summer camps, Camp Wautam is always one that fills up very quick, um, but outside of 4th of July week, which is always a weird week to fill because of vacations and those types of things, um, all three of our camps are full um, and we are seeing all of our boating and, and uh, sailing classes out at Howarth Park filled, a lot of things filled. Um, so numbers are looking very good, but I don't have the full report to give you guys, but um, I wanted to one, acknowledge um, and thank the public for their understanding and their patience in dealing with all of that. Um, at this point, we feel pretty confident that all of those holds have been resolved. None of them ever went actually through and, and fully processed. They were just holds on there, but still a big inconvenience on people. Um, if anyone still has one that out there that has not been resolved, obviously we don't have full access to look at people's bank information. So uh, we're kind of relying on, on communication back and forth with customers. But uh, if anyone out there is aware of one, please have them contact us. We'll definitely work with them to make sure it gets resolved. Um, so I, I wanna thank the community it was really patient. Like I said, these things are still filling up. They found ways people had to come in person instead of registering online and had to write checks for the first time. And who knows how they you know, find, find their checkbook lost in that junk drawer somewhere and, and write a check for the first time in years and, and all those things to get um, registered. And, and we know it was an inconvenience, but we really appreciate for the most part, um, everyone is really understanding and, and um, I appreciate that. Also wanna do a big thank you to our staff, as you can imagine the impact that has of those thousands of transactions taking place online and now all of a sudden those are phone calls and those are in-person visits. Um, and it was our desk staff stepped up and were phenomenal, um, but the, the reality is they could not have done it on their own. And so it was program staff everywhere, all hands on deck. Um, and the team really did a, a tremendous job in, in stepping up and mitigating. I told a number of people, um, this really was something, it, it was vendor related, merchant related. It really was something that was out of our control, but uh, what I'm very proud of is none of, none of the team ever took that as it meant that we couldn't do something about it. Yes, it was out of our control, but now it was time for us to do something. And, and everybody, um, without even being asked, stepped up and, and did a great job. So um, again, wanted to apologize to the community for that inconvenience. Uh, we are doing things still on the back end, working to, to make sure that it's not an issue that happens in the future and um, features that the system has and, and making sure that we're prepared for these future registration dates and don't run into these problems and, and maybe some internal things we could do a little bit differently to try to spread the impact of, of the, the big registration date. So um, just wanted to update the group on that in case you had heard anything. Um, that's kind of the, the full story of what went down. And uh, again, I think we're, we're in a good spot now. Everything seems to be resolved and, and we look forward to making sure we don't run into that problem in the future. Thanks. thanks, Jeff. Yep. Yep. Say, thanks, I'm Jeff. Reports. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Jen and Jeff. Um, you're the Taylor Swift of recreation programs, and uh, thanks. I, but that was important to explain to the public too. So I appreciate you coming on to let folks know that um, transparency is always good. So let's hopefully we can 
we can do it better next time, but that, that's kind of a good problem to have. Too many people wanting to sign up for programs. So good to hear. Um, are there any uh, questions or comments from other board members for Jen or Jeff? Carol, go ahead, please. Thank you. Uh, Jen, excuse me if I over didn't hear this, but is the MLK Park uh, all weather field going to be a first for Santa Rosa City Parks? Yes, it'll be the first field going in. That's right. <laughs> in very exciting. Very exciting. Yes. Thank you. Um, great. Any other questions or comments? Madonna, please go ahead. Thank, thank you so much. Um, so that's really exciting. $5 million for the park. Um, you mentioned, Jen, community outreach or engagement. What, what does that mean um, as far as, you know, what, what does that mean? Sure, that's going to be very similar to our other master planning processes where we um, meet with the, the folks that live in the community and meet with our community groups and gather input on what they would like to see. We've heard through many different un informal methods on what this community would like, but we want to formalize it with a master planning process. So that means three to four meetings out with the community to gather. It'll come back to this board for review and hopefully recommendation to council for approval. And at that point, once we're all satisfied with that master plan and what that looks like, we'll go to council for council approval and we can start the construction. So it's a pretty in-depth um, conversation with the community. And uh, we always plan on about three meetings, but we never know if we need to um, have additional meetings or specialized meetings with certain groups. So um, if you have any thoughts and ideas about that, um, I do, but okay. I can, um, you know, I definitely want to help uh, engage the community there. Fantastic. Um, but then also, you know, is there going to be, once it's complete, is there going to be a reveal, a, a say, an open house type for the park? Yes, there'll be a big, uh, for sure, a big celebration with our council members and, and city officials and, and board members here as well as officials from the um, state housing authority as well. So it'll be a big, that's, a that's, big a, one. that's great. And yeah. what I would like to, um, what I would like to, who I would like to have there, I would like to have, you know, um, people in the black community, you know, open, open that us, open us up in a prayer there um, or a native, um, you know, but invite them in to do maybe some of their songs, some of their dance, something that is to their culture. I would really like to um, advocate for, for them on that. Thank you. Yeah, that sounds fantastic. And I'll, I'll follow up with you offline as well when we get closer uh, to developing our plan for reaching out to the community. So that sounds great. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Madonna. Definitely, Jen. Please reach out to uh, board member Cruz, and that is that's Councilmember Alvarez's district. I think it's right right on the line. So I think the parks in his district. So definitely some great opportunities for community engagement. Um, that's exciting. Uh, any other questions or comments from the board? Uh, I had a quick uh, comment question. Well, yeah, thank thank you to the maintenance crew. Want to get back to that. Um, you keep the city running and especially when stuff's going wrong. So thank you for keeping us safe and, and getting the trees off the road. Um, it doesn't sound like a fun day, uh, but that's what you do for a living. So thank you um, for getting that done, everyone. And just a quick, a, a question on the grant. Um, we don't need to get too in depth here, Jen, but we've applied for a lot of grants on that. Did that did doing all that work on those other applications actually make this more likely to happen? Like, did you have more data on the park or did that lead to this? Yes, you're absolutely correct. And once we developed the first grant application, we just modify it from there. It was hugely helpful. Uh, it was a tight turnaround for this grant and a huge long shot. So uh, we were able to plug in our granting information. So it wasn't, it wasn't, Every grant application is a lift, but it wasn't as huge of a list as starting from scratch. So, yes. Nice. Great to see us get that. Okay. Thank you for the reports. And now we will move on to our uh, board member reports. And uh, Paul, just to give you an idea of what, uh, I know you were watching last month, but um, just to give you an idea of what we do here, this is just, you don't have to give any report. Uh, you can just Say no report for the month, or you can talk about a, a cool visit that you had to a park, 
um, anything, uh, you know, rec and parks related. Um, and like I said, you don't have to, so don't feel pressure to do that. I like to go to a, try to go to a new park every month. So I'd like to share that, uh, any, anything you want. So, um, I'll have someone else lead it off and, and come back to you. Carol, why don't you lead it off this month for your board member report, please? Sure. Um, the first thing I did after our last meeting was uh, go to the UNAM dedication, which was um, brilliant. And when I say brilliant, I mean in an illuminating kind of way. When the lights went on at night, it uh, it was like a uh, it was like a diamond tiara at at the uh, courthouse square. So that was uh, very joyous. I uh, am sorry to say I have not been down to spend time since, but looking forward to see how it is in real life as opposed to during the dedication. And um, as another board member, I participated in the place to play cleanup a couple of weeks ago. I somehow lucked out and didn't end up spending quality time with the hula ho, which um, according to my husband was truly a workout but I did uh, use my lower back for the bark work and um, working in the dog park was very satisfying. I also had the opportunity to go to the first cleanup Santa Rosa, I think is the name. It was last Friday, um, Cleveland Avenue, Piner Road, and uh, the beginning of a new volunteer program on city streets that involves um, many departments, including park maintenance. And uh, Sunday, I had the pleasure of going on a hike that started in City Park, Haworth, transitioned to Regional Park, Spring Lake, and then up to State Park, Annadale. And what a uh, true blessing we, we have in that um, triumvirate of parks all connecting. And for the first time, I noticed um, signage for Bay Trail. I don't know if that's new or not, but um, some of the trails in Annadale are now part of the Bay Ridge, excuse me if I'm getting that wrong, the, um, the long hike that's a statewide program. So that was pretty cool. And just found out, thanks to another rural cemetery volunteer, that we too have trees down and they will be um, dealt with next week. All right. Thank you, Carol. See, Carol, you set too high of a bar now. Paul's going to be intimidated and not going to have his fulsome of a report. But... So, Paul, just an FYI, many of you work for a living. I'm done with that. So I get to devote more time. Do not do not use my bar. <laughs> um, thank you for all you do. Uh, let's go to Carolina next. Do you have a report this month, Carolina? Oh, please unmute. Last month doing that. There we go. Um, I I do. I'm not quite as thorough as Carol. Um, I I did uh, go downtown to the you know uh, display. It's fabulous. It's like it's just what Carol said. It's absolutely beautiful. I met a friend down there and we just walked all around it and it was just really delightful. I would encourage you to do that when you're downtown. Just step over on the green and you can see it. It's really great. But I am going to um, bend your ear one more time because it's almost merit award time. So we've had our first meeting and the merit award is going to be Monday, September 18th at the Finley Center. So I'm going to be um, reminding you in an ever so gentle way, um, numerous times about talking it up. I'll tell you when the applications are available and et cetera. So I mostly did that, except I did, I did um, go to Franklin Park and it was only just a short little jaunt in there because I met someone, but that park has a wonderful feel to it. It just feels gentle. You know, I, I, I would encourage you if you don't have a lot of time to just stop by and get out of the car and walk in there. It just feels lovely. So sorry, Carol, I didn't follow your, your hike. <laughs> That's great. I went to Franklin Park too this last month. It is Oh, wonderful. did you? Yeah. Um, great park. 
Okay. Uh, Madonna, do you have a report this month? Um, not so much a report, but um, we are, so for Yakima Indian Education um, out by Shone Farms, we are having a resource fair this weekend, um, you know, and it is out on land, so um, that, but then also people have been, and I don't even know if this has anything to do with us, but people have been um, expressing to me their concerns for the the trail, the Joe Redoter trail, and um, the, the people unhoused that are coming back and so I said I will mention that in my meeting and so doing doing that job of mentioning it the concerns of um, not only native communities but um, also elders um, that bike and um, so wanted to put that out there thank you thanks that that is a county property but a lot of folks think it's it's our property it's totally okay to, to bring up it links to one of our parks um, and it, I hope the county can work on some solutions to that it uh, looks like they're doing that. Um, Guido, do you have a report from this month? I think I did that right now. Can you hear me? Yes, <laughs> we can. Good. Sorry about that. Um, I don't have a specific report other than to bring up uh, some comments that I made on Southwest Community Park on Hearn Avenue. Again, uh, uh, I really feel that we should put some lighting in there. The uh, the Hispanic people uh, are in there till after dark. The kids playing, it's just like when they come home from work and the father grabs the kids and they head to the park and they're having a beautiful time, but it's really it's really dark as well as where the city uh, bus picks up and drops off people, there's no lights there. So I think it would be a little more secure security uh, advantage anyway that uh, if we had some lighting in there and it could the lights could go off at nine o'clock or something but it gets dark so soon now that uh they're in there you go by there and it, you see all the cars still there people gathering around and that's uh and the other thing is we have a new housing uh, uh building going up there on hern avenue and on that side of the street there's no sidewalks uh for the the number of kids it's going to be 154 units so you figure there's going to be a lot of children that are going to want to walk two blocks down to the park and they're going to have to run across the street. And there's so much traffic on Hearn Avenue now that I really feel that, that the city needs to uh, get some sidewalk on the south, it's north side of Hearn Avenue so the kids can stay there until they get down to, to the street that they can cross over into the park, make it a little safer. That's it. Okay, thank you, Guido. Uh, Paul, now we're gonna go to you if you have any report from this month. All right, I was taking notes last meeting, guys, so I do have a report. Uh, I visited, uh, I believe it's Brush Creek Community Park. It's a small little park right off uh, Brush Creek Boulevard. Uh, great little park, took my kids, uh, it's fun. No complaints, everything looked nice and clean to me while I was there. And uh, also visit Coffee Park regularly and things are looking good there as well. So uh, that's it. No, uh, no maintenance updates, but things are looking good at the two parks I visited. Nice, good job visiting a new park. <laughs> um, thank you. Oh, Madonna, do you have something to add too? I did, sorry about that. Um, so yes, yeah, shout out to the city of Santa Rosa. There's a, a field, uh, Lincoln, Link Lane in, in West 9th Street, and there has been graffiti there for I don't even know how long because I go that way for driving to work. And they they finally painted over it. But I thought this happens all the time. And normally when there's a mural that happens less. So I don't know who makes that decision, but I kind of think we probably should put a mural up there, something beautiful for that area so that it's not marked up with gang graffiti. Thank you. Great, thanks for that. I, uh, I agree with your comments. I, I think the art in public places might have some sort of mural fund or something, Madonna, I'm not sure, but um, maybe if you email Jen, she can try to connect you with someone at the city. Um, Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, 
Great. Okay. Thanks, everyone, for your report. So my report, I'll actually piggyback on that. Councilmember Rogers is doing a graffiti cleanup, and it might be this weekend. I'm not sure about that, but it, uh, he will advertise it on all his social media and such. Um, but yeah, he that is a that's a big issue in his district downtown. So he likes to do those regularly. Um, hopefully, I'll hit some park properties and. Uh, yeah, not much a report from this month for me. I sadly had to miss the UNUM dedication. I was out of town for work, but I have gone back and it looks great. Uh, it's, it's interesting because it's kind of a different sculpture in the daytime and at nighttime. So it's really cool piece of public art in that way, uh, that you get to see different facets of it, depending on the time of day. And every time I've gone by, you know, I work downtown, so I see it a lot and people are using it. They're walking in it, taking taking pictures in it, uh, touching it, which is part of public art too. And I do know that we're going to have another piece of public art in that square should be later this year. The Ruth Asawa Fountain's coming back. So really good to see Courthouse Square uh, looking even better. Um, and also I did go to the place to play park cleanup. Thanks everyone for coming to that. Uh, our mayor, our new mayor showed up as well. I think Councilmember McDonald might might have come too. Um, yep. So thank you, council members, for coming. Thanks to all the volunteers. I was on the the hula ho or whatever it's called. Um, that is a workout. Uh, but I also put some more chips in dog park. My dog likes that park, so I figured good to help out. And someone was throwing a birthday party there, by the way. They liked that place so much they were throwing a birthday party at the dog park. So good job to everyone. Um, and that is my report from this month. So we will now uh, we will now move on to our first scheduled item, and uh, item number eight, and that is our Board of Community Services Ordinance Update. Uh, our Assistant Parks Planner Emily Ander will present our Ordinance Subcommittee recommended updates, and we are going to go uh, hopefully to a vote to move that on to the City Council. So Emily, please take it away. We can't hear you if you are speaking right now. All right, can you confirm that you're seeing the full presentation and not the like notes page? I don't see any notes. It looks like the normal slideshow deal. Fabulous, thank you so much. Um, thank you. So uh, good afternoon, Chair Pitts and members of the board. I'm Emily Ander, Park Planner Assistant, and I'm here today to discuss updates to the board's bylaws and the related council ordinance. As you may recall, the current code and council ordinances that govern the board require the board to have eight members with five members needed to achieve quorum. However, the board has only seven members because each of the seven council members appoints one board member. The board has been functioning with seven members since 2006. And this obviously places a much higher burden on each of you to attend every meeting. And it will be you know, even more critical when we move next month into um, meeting in person. So in order to align the board membership with the city charter and council policy 000-06, a new ordinance has to be written and adopted to amend the city code. To create a new ordinance, the board formed a subcommittee of three members who met four times over the past three months. They updated the board's bylaws and drafted a new ordinance. And we're here today to share their work and ask for your feedback and recommendation to council. Um, so this diagram shows how the board's five governing documents work together and relate to one another. Over the past three months, the subcommittee has updated um, the board's bylaws here, um, and also has drafted a new ordinance, which falls here. So first, we're gonna talk about the changes that were made to the bylaws. There are nine major changes that were made to bring, I guess they're not necessarily major, but nine changes that were made to bring the bylaws into alignment with the board's governing documents, and also to reflect the board's current role. Um, I'm going to go through the proposed changes one by one, and we'll open the floor for discussion after each item. 
you will note that four of these items we did discuss at the January meeting, but we're bringing them back um, so that they are part of the overall discussion. So the first um, is the subcommittee is recommending changing the name of the board so that it reflects the name of the department that it advises. You see on the slide um, that the proposed name is the Parks and Recreation Board because it is staff's understanding that the name of the department will may become Parks and Recreation. However, um, as Jen mentioned or alluded to in her um, update, the city manager could decide to leave the department's name as Recreation and Parks. And if that is the case, then um, the board would be called the Recreation and Parks Board. So today we're asking for your support for the name of the board to align with the name of the department. Um, so with that, is there, are there any questions um, on the board name? We do? Yes, I, I was on the uh, board in Petaluma for 10 years and we made it recreation and, excuse me, parks and rec. And that's because parks come first and then the recreation goes into the park. And uh, I think it should be parks and recreation. Okay, thank you. I'll jump in here just real quick, Emily. I think that we'll go with Parks and Rec because I've heard from some council members and, and these uh, the thoughts from the city manager's office. And as Emily explained, we can, we can do a switcheroo back if needed. But I think what is really key is that we're getting rid of our current kind of generic name and going to a descriptive name that describes what we actually do. So I just want to put those that uh that in there carol go ahead thank you um i don't know how much it work is necessary to update all of the references to the name my hope would be they would only have to go in once and update from board of community services to whatever the final name of our board is which in my opinion should be an exact replica of the department name um, for both simplicity and consistency. Thank you. Great, thanks, Carol. Any any other comments on this item from anyone? Okay, please proceed, Emily. Thank you, Logan. The subcommittee drafted a new purpose statement to better reflect what the board does. Um, the purpose of the recreation, of Parks and Recreation Board is to review uh, parks and recreation policies, facilities, and programs, um, and advise the Director of Parks and Recreation and City Council on their effectiveness, to seek public input and engagement on matters related to city park facilities and recreation programs, and to serve as an advocate for recreation and parks in the community. And this new purpose goes beyond the old purpose to incorporate the board's role in public engagement and advocacy when it comes to parks and recreation in the community. Yep. Go ahead. Did, oh, sorry, we're yep. stopping there. Yes, My apologies. <laughs> Any, anyone have any questions on our new proposed purpose statement or comments? Okay, not seeing any. Go ahead. Uh, <clears throat> so the subcommittee updated and added to the board's powers and duties. Most recently, the board had five specific powers and duties, and the subcommittee is promote, proposing increasing the number to nine, not 10, as my slide says. We'll say I was um, sick last week and a little bit in a brain fog, so I apologize for that mistake. Um, and the updates and changes to the powers and duties um, serve the following purposes. To focus the board's role wholly on parks, recreation, and their maintenance, and away from the community beautification and community relations, um, which are roles that the community advisory board now um, takes care of or works on, um, as well as to specify the board's areas of oversight, to make recommendations to council for their approval, 
to actively engage with residents and with your particular council member so that the community knows and cares about what is going on with parks and recreation in Santa Rosa. And finally, to ensure that the maintenance of Santa Rosa's parks and recreation facilities is a priority for and responsibility of the board. Are there any questions um, on, and hopefully you've also read through um, the both the red line and the clean copies of the bylaws so you can see exactly what the, the wording of the exact powers and duties, which ones are new and which ones have just been updated or kept. Okay, seeing none, I'll move yep, forward. Go ahead, Emily. Thank you. So next, um, we'll talk about uh, the number of members. Um, <clears throat> um, so this is the, the impetus for actually doing this, doing this process um, is that we need to change the number of board members from eight to seven in order to align with the number of council members, as well as to align with the city's charter and council policy six. Any questions there? Our feedback. This will make our quorum four people. Right now it is five, and that is sometimes <laughs> annoying. So this will be helpful for holding meetings. This is my comment. <laughs> Absolutely. You can go ahead, Emily. Um, the next is chair duties. Um, the subcommittee increased the number of chair duties from five to seven and updated the language of other duties to reflect what the chair actually does. All the language in green is the original language from the 1989 bylaws, and the language in blue is the new language. So the chair will preside at meetings of the board, assist the staff liaison with the agenda for board meetings, represent the board at city events, submit an annual report to the board and city council, and create an annual work plan with the board, represent the board before the city council on items of significance, appoint committees as needed, and receive quarterly attendance reports and immediately notify the appointing council member if a Parks and Recreation Board member is absent without cause for two uh, six successive regular meetings. Um, and that number seven comes directly from um, Council Policy 6. Um, any thoughts on that one? Or Logan or Carol, if you have more information to add to that? Nothing to add. Nope. Okay. Thank you. Uh, the subcommittee proposes moving the meeting start time from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. in order to ensure that the public can participate in the meeting outside of business hours and also to allow more residents who work nine to five to participate on the board. Um, the subcommittee did look um, at the meeting start time for uh, the boards and commissions across the city, as we discussed last at the last meeting. Um, and start times vary throughout the boards, but almost the majority of them do meet during business hours. Um, we also looked at the suggestion of starting the meeting at 6 p.m. Um, and the subcommittee really felt like it would be just too much of an imposition on both the staff and the board to meet then. And it's also kind of, you know, like, especially for younger families or families with young children to that's kind of dinner and bedtime. So it starts, so it's harder maybe for the public to join. Was the, the rationale there? Um, is any, is there any discussion that you'd like to have around that? If, uh, if I could, so I, I didn't get the speech in the last meeting, but uh, I would just like to note that I, I do like the 4 p.m. start time. Um, I understand that it does conflict with, with some people's schedule and with work and things of that nature, but I do think uh, since the purpose of this, right, is to inform the public and things of that nature, uh, five o'clock I know can be difficult for some people, similar to kind of six o'clock. It is right around that dinner, getting kids ready type of time. Um, so four o'clock to me just seemed as if you, at least you get a little headway right, you kind of get that maybe 30, 45 minutes before you got to get dinner going that you can either call into the meeting or, or listen or something of that nature. Um, so I would just like to keep that in mind if we are going to be setting meeting times that sometimes a little earlier is helpful uh, for those 
you know, dealing with kids or soccer practice, whatever it may be. So uh, just that's my comment. Thank you. Uh, I agree with Paul. Four o'clock is more convenient for me also as far as my um, events on Wednesdays. So um, it just is. And I don't, we don't usually have great crowds of people coming in to talk to us. So and if they do, we will still be there at five. But we could get a lot of things done before and then we'd be able to deal with something that had a crowd or needed some serious long discussion. We'd have everything else out of the way as if it started at four. Well, let's get everyone's thoughts on that. Carol, do you have a, a comment on that? Mine isn't so much a comment as just a point of clarification, and that is uh, starts with a query. If the start time were to, and this is because we're going back to real life, and many of our board members have not um, had the joy of getting to Finley Center at the end of the workday, which can prove challenging, be it a four o'clock or a five o'clock start time. My point of clarification is if we change the start time to something other than four o'clock, best case scenario, what month would it be foreseen going into um, effect? And just FYI, regardless, we can assume March, the first meeting back in real life will not have a new start time. It, that's basically all I wanted to suggest other than an interest in listening to the other board members' opinions on start time. Let's uh, let me let me have let me ask have the other board members weigh in, Carol, and then I'll have staff answer the question about when this will become a final ordinance. Because I think that was that what you're asking when it would be passed by the council and it would take effect. It's more that people just understand if we vote on something today that it does not go the the ship does not turn quickly. Right. Okay. Let's let me just let's stick on the start on the time just because we're on that and uh let's get thoughts from other board members madonna do you have a uh opinion about four or five p.m start time sure thank you uh five i would go with for my personal reasons getting there um and then i don't know if more people would go at five i think we could try it if no one goes then we could go back to four Thank you. Guido, what are your thoughts? Um, it doesn't matter to me being retired, you know, <laughs> uh, four or five. Uh, I kind of like the five a little bit better, but uh, four is fine too. All right. I like five personally, and it is, it, there's a personal reason. I have to use an hour of vacation time every month. So that is unfortunately some lost income. Um, and uh, there are some practical reasons as well. If we hold a public hearing, which we don't do very often, but like a, a park plan that is required by the city code to be uh, at 5 p.m. or later. So we'd have to do the, and that the meeting might go past then, but uh, we'd have to extend the meeting to 5 p.m. if we did that. Um, so that was another reason that we chose five at the subcommittee level. Um, well, we can. We can definitely debate that separately if we want. We want to get this done tonight, though, um, ideally. Uh, but let's real quick, Carol, hold on. Do you have something on the start time? Yeah, I, I just another point of clarification from staff. If let's say we changed it to five and then, as Madonna suggested, wanted to go back to four, does it have to go through the entire city council procedure again um, if we change our mind? Yeah, why don't you answer that, Emily or Jen, and then also explain how long it will take to get through the city council this time or in the future. We anticipate that this will take it, <clears throat> till June or July, sometime during the summer, that it would go into effect. Um, and as for changing the time back, it would, I believe it'd have to go back to, um, back to council again um, through the ordinance. It'd be a very simple ordinance that would just change the time. Um, so we wouldn't have to have a subcommittee, it'd be really straightforward, but uh, we wouldn't need to go 
back through the process. Is, is it possible, uh, sorry to interrupt, is it possible to state in the ordinance that the meeting start time shall take place between 4 p.m. and 6 p.m.? Is it possible just to include that in the ordinance language and then start times could be set via the board? Um, is that a possibility or do we have to, per code, have a hard, uh, a, I guess, time as opposed to a range? Well, I was thinking maybe we don't put the time in at all. Um, might be the easier way to <laughs> go with that, but I, I'll, I'll check. I'll check into that if we have to have it. Um, okay. Uh, that's a great question. Great legal question, Paul. I think the Brown Act stipulates that we have to have a posted meeting start time. Um, so I suppose we could change that or decide every month. I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't recommend that though, because people need to be able to rely on a consistent time to, you know, plan their schedule or if they want to comment on something, uh, know when they're going to do that. Um, I've, I'm not familiar with any board that has a variable start time, and I think that is a violation of the Brown Act, but I'm not sure about that part. Um, uh, fair enough. I said no. No, that's a great question. Yeah. Good question. Um, Jen, did you, you unmuted like you had to say something. Do you have anything to add? I was just going to say that we do need to have a consistent time um, on an annual basis for this, so whatever we do decide we need to decide a time um, and then if we did if you did make it five and then go back to four you're looking at an additional three to four months minimum to make that change at council so you're looking at a potentially year-long process so I would I would say if this needs more debate it's something that we can bring this portion of this discussion uh, back to the board and have a more lengthy discussion or we can um, talk about it more at this point but we do need to we need to narrow down a time so if we uh, were to table this part of it for now, so if we're going to talk about this in the future, Jen, are we still able to advance the whole ordinance and then say, come back next month and decide on a better time? And that still gets into the overall ordinance update to the council. Does it further delay the council action? I guess, bottom line. Right. No, you wouldn't be delaying the council action if we just took this particular item off the table. Uh, we still have, as Emily will get into later, uh, rounds through the city attorney's office as well as the city manager's office that has to go through. So we have some time, as a as an organization, you know, as a board, to um, to bring this back, this one item back for sure. Okay, thank you, Carol. Did you have a question? Can't hear you. I was just going to comment that for once the slow turning ship might work in our benefit if we could get the ball ro rolling we are either stuck or blessed with a four o'clock start time for a couple of months and have the opportunity to see either how that works or how it stymies the current members of the board so blessing in disguise perhaps okay so let's uh, we haven't done a motion yet. So when we get to the point for a motion, someone can take this part out. And uh, I think I, I think we're having enough debate that it, it'd be a good idea to, to have a lengthier discussion on the meeting start time. So maybe for next month, um, Jan or Emily, can you bring that document that you brought to the subcommittee that had all the different board start times and put that into the, the packet for next month? Um, and and Paul, you can you can think about this further and and comment next month. You signed up for a four p.m. meeting time, I assume. So are you? Would you be unable to serve at five p.m.? I don't want to switch. No, to no, not at all. And honestly, personally, for me, probably six p.m. is best. Uh, but I just know since this is kind of a uh, this one truly is you know a, a public committee, parks and recs things. It, it's kind of a, a family oriented committee so to speak and i just know personally uh five can be rough you know especially if you got little ones you're trying to make dinner you're trying to do whatever i feel like the four o'clock start time uh, it does give at least that little leeway where you know hey if i want to be there at the beginning of a meeting or something's important to me i can set 30 minutes aside be there and still be home for dinner type of thing 
Um, but no, as far as attendance, anything like that, I, I can come at any time. That's, that's not a problem. And again, 6 p.m. is probably best for me personally. Um, but just on, on a community organizational level, however you want to put it, I think 4 p.m. is good for those with families. Um, just, just a note. Okay, appreciate your thoughts. So let's, we'll bring this one back. Um, folks can think about it for a month, figure out in their own lives, maybe talk to some folks in the community if you could. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, Jen, but people, members of the public will still be able to participate virtually. So they'll still be able to call in uh, at any point in the meeting, right? They don't have to show up in person. That's correct. Yeah, I think yeah. I missed that part of my update. But yeah, the community community members will still be able to participate virtually if they can't make it there in person. Uh, and they can also send emails, etc, as needed as well. And we, uh, Chair, I just want to update you when uh, if we do bring this one back, uh, we'll bring back some of the information we brought to the subcommittee and answer some of those questions that came up tonight as well. Okay. Yeah, well, I want to respect everyone's thoughts on this, and uh, it sounds like we got some more thinking to do. So let's let's uh, put this one aside for now, and then if you want to keep going through the presentation, Emily, that'd be great. Great, thank you. Um, currently, in the bylaws, there's no mention of the staffing requirements needed to run the board. Um, so the subcommittee added language to call out the two staff members who have roles related to the board and what those roles are. The staff liaison is the Parks and Recreation Director or their designee. Currently, Jen Santos, Deputy Director of Parks, fills this role. If and when a director is hired for the department, the director would fill that role. The recording secretary complies with all procedural requirements related to the board. Currently, Shelley McClure, Administrative Secretary, fills this role. Any questions or additions or feedback? Would this require new staff hires or just uh, clarification of roles? It's just, yeah, putting in the role, putting the roles into the bylaws. Got it. Yeah, calling them out. Good question. Um, so changing the number of members back from eight to seven um, also changes the number of members needed to achieve quorum. As Logan mentioned, it would go from five to four. And that would put us in, align in alignment with the city charter and council policy six. Questions about that? Um, <clears throat> and then um, to make it easier for board members as well as staff to find and keep up with city policies and procedures that relate directly to the board. The subcommittee incorporated language from other governing documents into the bylaws, specifically the city council policies. There's information um, in Article 4 under membership uh, related to new member orientation, member attendance, and incumbent members. Um, and all that information comes from Council Policy 6. And then there's also information on conflict of interests and ethics, which comes from Council Policies 3, 6, and 51. Uh, and this language is taken directly from these council policies, so board members and staff don't have to dig through each and every document to find the bits and pieces that relate directly to the board. So I'm curious if anybody learned anything while reading through these um, when they read the bylaws. Because um, there are a lot of documents to read to get up to speed on, on what your, your role is as a member of the board. All this language look okay and being okay. nodding heads. Yep. Yeah. Great. Great. Um, so that concludes the bylaws, and we'll move on um, to the new ordinance language. Um, <clears throat> so the language um, in the proposed council ordinance is very high level and brief. It covers the nuts and bolts of what the board is and how it is structured. And the language addresses the eight items on this slide, um, most of which we just went through in the bylaws. The name of the board, the number of members on the board, how members are appointed, how long they serve, how they can be how you can be removed from the board, the uh, statement of purpose for the board, the quorum, and um, the powers and duties. 
So yeah, we really had to address the bylaws before the ordinance because um, the ordinance is really the nuts and bolts versus the the meat of the of what you do. Any questions on this, or did you have any questions when you reviewed the entire <laughs> ordinance? Great. Um, so there is one area um, outside of the subcommittee's work, but related to it that we wanted to discuss with you today. And that is the opportunity for staff to investigate the possibility of the advisory board moving to a commission. Um, and you might ask what the difference is between the two. Um, and I've just kind of begun research on this. So I'm, I'm sure there's still questions that I won't be able to answer at this point in time, but um, as many of you have been part of this board for a, a while, you know that you review plans and policies, operations, and budgets, and then you recommend them forward to council for adoption. Um, if if you were to be a commission, then the commission would review those same plans and policies and budgets, but you would also make the final decision on most of those and, and be the one to adopt them. Um, and with that said, the commission's decisions could be appealed to council for a final decision um, if there was something that um, perhaps the community was unhappy with or the board or the council couldn't agree, or the commission couldn't agree on, it could move forward to council to make that final decision. Um, or if there was a controversial item um, that the, council, the commission wanted to weigh in on but wanted um, council to review and make the final decision on, that could move forward to council. Um, another difference is that a commission would have um, a more formal structure, um, more like council, where instead of there just being the scheduled items like this presentation, there could be consent items that um, where you've got the background information and just pass them all at one time before moving on to scheduled items. There could be an opportunity and a set time on the agenda for like public hearings. Um, so the public always knows that they tune in at 530. That's when the public hearing would start. Um, <clears throat> the another thing is that um, a commissioner or um, the whole commission could refer items directly to staff for review. And those could be items that members of the public brought forward to you or it's something that you came across in your reading or day to day life that you thought that would be important for the commission to explore and understand better. And then we could have um, like a study session or a closed session to um, with the commission to learn about and discuss the item in detail. Um, one thing that I found looking at other agencies, um, parks and rec commissions, was um, that some require um, or request that there are certain field specific qualifications of some or all of the members, be it a, a, an educational background or worker life experience um, in the field or just involvement or knowledge in the field. So it could be as something as simple as you are a soccer coach and your child played soccer for 16 years and you know how things work in Sonoma County and you have that experience to bring forward to the board or whether or not you have a, a degree in parks and tourism or something like that. Um, but that's just something to explore. Um, so with that general information, um, staff would like to know if you would like to like for us to continue to research and investigate this. And if you would, then we will take this forward to council when we take the ordinance forward to them to get their feedback, see if they um, are interested in us exploring this further. Um, and if they were to and we move forward with it, we would also have to kind of go through this process again of forming a subcommittee and creating bylaws to organize and regulate the commission and um, going through the ordinance process um, again, which is not an, not an issue, it's just it's a, a, time, a time thing. So with that, I would love to hear your thoughts on. So let me just clarify one thing, if I could, Emily. Um, we're gonna this the advisory board versus commission. Uh, we are gonna be putting that into our recommendations that we're sending to the city council. Correct. That's the process. No. We were we're just gonna move forward with the bylaws and the ordinance right now. But when we go forward to them to present it, we want to talk about both. Um, the possibility of adding a youth member to the 
to the board as well as the possibility of moving from a board to a commission. We want to know if those are things that they are amenable, amenable to um, and are supportive of. Um, I don't, just if they have just general feedback for us on that. Okay. Um, may. Okay. Let's. Let me suggest that we. So we're going to do one motion tonight, and you want this. Uh, I guess I'm just trying to figure out how we word this. You want this to be part of that motion as well. This advisory versus commission action. Yeah, that's a great question. No, I wasn't thinking of it that way. Um, I the I was thinking of it and the, that we there would just be a few items that we would take forward and just to get their thoughts on um, before we move to the next step. So, like we've kind of tabled, you know, the youth member to um, the future for us to so that we can move forward, um, getting the number of members down from eight to seven. Um, and so, because we there's going to be a lot of changes that would have to happen if we decide to add a youth member. Um, so it's just kind of another item that we would be exploring and investigating um, at the same time. Um, I don't think that we're ready yet. We can. We would probably. I would assume I would bring my research back to the group on um, what it would take to become a commission, and then we would take a recommendation forward from there. Um, but I also don't think. I wouldn't, I'm not going to put in an incredible amount of time and energy into doing the research before the council presentation. Um, if they're, you know, if, if it's something that they're not interested in us pursuing. Yeah. So are you thinking that we here at this board would look into this more in depth at a future meeting, like a April or something? Okay. Yeah, that's Great. a good question. We, you know, we haven't talked about exactly how we would do that, but um, yes, it would be something that we would talk about more. Okay. Yeah. So this, and, uh, this chair, if I could just add, we're really looking for feedback from the from the entire board about this particular item, as well as the youth uh, member that Emily will talk about shortly. Uh, whereas we're looking for a motion on the all the other things we want to specifically take forward. Um, we have an intermediary step of working with the city manager's office as well as the city attorney's office to get their feedback as well. But um, with this and the other item for up for discussion today, just hearing some general feedback from the entire board would be helpful for us. So when we do come back to this board, we will also have information from the city manager's office as well about the topic. Okay, before we do the other, the youth commission thing, I think we should go ahead and vote on the motion before we okay. put too much else in folks' heads so that we can just get that over with. So let's, um, if you could, uh, skip back up to the top, Emily, just to give a quick recap of what we're looking for in a motion today. So which changes uh, would that incorporate? <clears throat> or that, this is fine too, the recommendation, yep. Um, so we're recommending that um, the council review the board's bylaws and by resolution adopt a city council ordinance change the name of the board to the Parks and Recreation Board or whatever it is to align with the name of the department, to update the board's purpose, to align the number of members with the number of council members, to reduce the number of members needed to achieve a quorum, to update the board's powers and duties, and to update the process for member appointment to and member removal from the board. Great. Okay, that actually covered it all. So that left out the meeting time and it left out uh, the youth member and commission versus advisory. Perfect. Okay, so what I'm looking for is a motion from a board member uh, to uh, take this recommendation to the city council. Uh, Carol, I see your hand up. Is that you introducing the motion? I do. I would like to um, move to move this forward and take a vote. Great. Do we have a second on that motion? I'd like to, go ahead. I, I'd like to second that motion. Guido B. in Carolina. So Guido is the second. No um, problem. <laughs> so we, we have a motion by Carol, seconded by Guido to take this recommendation to the city council. Do we have uh, any other questions or debate on that motion? 
Okay, seeing no other hands raised, we'll go to that vote. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. Or aye. raise your hand. Aye. 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 Great, we have a hand up there for Madonna as well. Uh, no one opposed and no abstentions. Great, okay. Madonna, I assume your hand is still just up from the yes vote and you haven't lowered it yet. Great, okay. Uh, so that passed unanimously. Thanks everyone. Okay, Emily, sorry to interrupt you. I just wanted to get that that done with. So let's, um, do you wanna do that slide that I skipped over that had the different types of uh, advisory boards or commissions, the area for discussion? Am I looking at the right slide? I think so. I hope so. Okay. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Go ahead, Paul. I was just going to say, quick question for staff. Um, as as far as you guys are concerned, does it make more sense to have a a, a commission versus a board? Would that help as far as efficiencies, as, far as you know what you guys are trying to implement? Or is that seen as kind of another hoop you got to jump through? I, I guess, in other words, is it easier to implement some sort of change via commission structure as opposed to having to go to city council every time? Would that be one of the reasons to have a commission as opposed to just an advisory board? Okay. Yeah. I think it both empowers staff and it empowers the board um, to take a strong role in, in what you're doing. It makes it, the board even more important than it is currently. Um, and it also takes work off of council's plate. Uh, but but they're like I explained, they're also there if if need be to support or make or make a final decision or for citizens to appeal. Uh, I'll comment quickly on behalf of recreation, obviously coming from not having the experience of this board being a commission. Um, and so I'm needing to learn as we go through the process as well. But I can tell you there are things, proposals and, and different things that come to recreation in terms of, um, you know, application of fees for, you know, use of parks or buildings or some of those things for permits and, and those types of things that um, the full process of going to council and the timeline of it makes it something that we can't even really consider um, evaluating. For, for something like that, where I, I, you know, not knowing exactly what this looks like, I'm guessing a little less tape for us to, to go through um, and a little easier to go. You know, this board is for our department, so obviously easier to get on the agenda and in, in short matter and those types of things. So um, I, I, without knowing all the details of it, I, I think it does present an opportunity for us to uh, maybe serve the community a little bit more proactively than we can under the current current structure. And I'll just chime in there after after Jeff to uh, say something similar. I think that uh, board member Quant mentioned the, the 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 pace of government before, and and this certainly would help us with some of the things we deal with day to day. You all are hearing the issues in the recreation and parks world more often than the council members are uh, from staff in particular, and. Um, that I think the biggest benefit would be to uh, the community processes that are out there and the things like the master planning things that we bring to you, the operational plans we bring to you can be um, handled by this uh, by this commission. Um, and then things that we deem that should be going to council that are maybe a little more controversial or we absolutely must have council's feedback on, we can certainly take that process. So it provides an interesting um, opportunity. I know that in Emily's research, she found that the board uh, used to be a commission uh, years ago. So I think that's kind of interesting that we've made some changes there. Great, were there any other slides on the board versus commission discussion, Emily? Okay, um, does anyone else have any thoughts on being an advisory board, which we are right now, versus a commission? Carol, what are your thoughts? Um, I think going back to real life is a wonderful coincidence that that this is something that um, the real life newly configured board can really sink its teeth into and real life is a wonderful place to do it. I also think that um, it um, it adds to our plate 
um, in responsibilities and possibly very much uh, time commitment. And that is something that needs to be recognized and honored that, um, that we are going from an advisory role into a decision-making role and that's not something to be taken lightly, in my opinion. Thanks, Carol. Um, Go ahead, Carolina. Yeah, Chair Pitts, should we? Do we have to get public comments before we vote on this? We're not voting on it today. So this was just Emily no, we bringing don't it up. To. Yeah, this okay. was, so that's why that's why I got the motion out of the way. So we're done with voting today. Um, yeah. okay. We just wanted we wanted to get uh, board members' thoughts on this so that Emily can do more research and and better direct her research based on your comments. Got it. Yeah. I just want to do it right. Absolutely. That's a great question. Yeah. Um, any other questions or comments from any other board members on this this item? Okay, I'll give some thoughts, Emily. We you know we talked about it at the subcommittee. I would love for us to be a commission, and I think Carol's absolutely right that we shouldn't just do that lightly. We need to know what we're getting into. So I think one thing that could be helpful is um, a slide. And I, I know you said you hadn't done all the research yet, so I'm not attacking your slides, but. Um, a slide that would better explain the new powers um, that would come with a commission. I assume we're not losing any of our current uh, powers or responsibilities. Um, if we are, let us know that. But what what's new about this? Um, and yeah, so I think that'd be helpful for the future. And then just some comments on it. Um, yeah, I think this is a good idea because I think the whole reason that these boards and commissions exist is to make the city council's job easier. So basically we are the distilling process. We're trying to take large amounts of stuff and make it smaller and more digestible because the city council deals with everything else besides parks and rec. So they don't have time, as Jeff explained, to go th through a fee study and uh, you know they are literally voting on the fees, and he showed us that last meeting on everything. Um, and I just don't think that that's maybe maybe they'll have a different opinion. It's going to be up to them ultimately, but I think that their time can be better served than going through fee tables. Um, and I think that's our job is to take some of the burden off of them, um, and that's what this would do. Uh, so I'm, I'm glad we're moving forward and we'll talk about it more in the future. Yeah, Paul, go ahead. Oh, just following up on that, as far as uh, slide recommendations, I guess, uh, perhaps a slide just on the efficiency, right? Just kind of turnaround time. Uh, the idea being, say you want to implement some sort of new policy uh, under the current structure, it's going to take you, I don't know, 18 months, whereas versus under a commission structure, maybe it takes three months or something like that. I don't know, just something so we can get an idea of if this will streamline uh, you know, efforts within the department, kind of what that looks like, or if, if not, if it is you know, another hoop to jump through, then maybe it's not a good idea. Uh, but if we could get some clarification on that, I think that'd be helpful. Yep, great that point. That's be, exactly what we're looking for right that now. That would be really helpful if we could do that. That would make our time much better, better use of our time for uh, going further than if we could know what those kind of timing uh, issues are going to be. Yeah, and I think kind of back to Jeff. Jeff looked like you're going to say something. Go ahead. I was just going to say, and, and I'm going to use, I'm going to quote Paul so that it's not my phrasing of it, but in terms of, of an extra uh, hoop to, to jump through, um, I, I think, you know, I could speak for Jen as well. We take a lot of um, value in getting your advice. Um, but I would say the current structure is more the extra hoop, if you want to phrase it that way, because if we're going to council, we come to you first as an advisory board to get your recommendation, and then we go to council. Um, so if anything, I would say it's reducing a hoop because we would come to you as an advisory and as a commission. Um, so some, obviously not everything wouldn't go to council, but in those things that are suitable to be decided by you as a commission, it would take a step out of the process of, okay, we came to you guys for your advice. Now we go to council for a decision. 
we would come to you guys and present and, and be able to achieve both of those in, in the one presentation. Mm -hmm. And and I think you said this, Emily. So please elaborate or Jen maybe. So all those decisions are appealable. So if we're setting fees and we make a fee that someone hates on, you know, whatever, boat rentals at Lake Ralphine, that could be appealed to the city council, right? Correct. Great. Okay. So we're still going to save them time, but there's also still that safeguard that if a resident is really upset by what we do, they can go to a higher authority, which would be the city council. Um, that's rare, but that would totally be their right to do that. Um, great. Okay, so you're thinking you'll bring this back maybe March or April to have us do a deeper dive? That's a good question. Um, I was thinking more that we would wait until we hear more from, from city council on, or at least from the city manager and the city attorney's office um, and the city clerk's office. I okay, I just, I, I, I did that timeline because I thought you wanted it with the council update. Do you think we can get all that done by the June or July council meeting? Um, can you repeat that? Get what done? So we're, the, the, maybe I misunderstood. Our ordinance will be voted on by the city. So what we just moved forward will get voted on likely at a June or July council meeting. Wasn't the intention to also get direction from the city council on this question at that same meeting? Yes. And if we here at the, this board work on it, let's say in May or whenever, you'll be... Will we work on it before that that June or July city council meeting? I guess is my question. I wasn't anticipating doing that, but I'm happy. I'm happy to do that because I don't. Oh. I don't know how much information. I don't think we need to take a lot of information forward to council. I think it's more. Um, I mean, they do work with the planning commission, the design review board. You know, that's called a board. They're kind of you know, and the uh, public utilities board, the board of public utilities. Um, which again, that one says board, but it acts more as a commission. So they have experience with those to like have a better understanding, I think, of the difference between an advisory board and a commission. Um, but I mean, I'll certainly look to Jen to, and, and happy to do whatever the board and, and Jen would like me to do. Um, I just don't, I don't know that we need, that I need to do all the research before going to council um, and get your feedback on it before going to council. We're not going to set up like a commission structure or figure it out kind of those details before going to council. Um, that'll be done after we get their feedback. Right? Okay, that's that's logical. Go ahead, Jen. I was just gonna say, I we just wanna clarify that we would wanna get um, a go or no go uh, from council versus, um, you know, to do the research and come back to this board after that and then back to council. So there's an eminent need to get the ordinances that we talked about tonight updated immediately, especially our members. Our members. Um, we recognize this is going to take a much longer time to research and do the, the work around and that the, it's, it's unknown if we can get information back from the city manager's office in time to make it, um, you know, we just don't think it's gonna make it in time. So <clears throat> we can do, uh, what we can do is, um, make sure that our discussion with the council is split into uh, into options for things to discuss and get feedback on and things to make a recommendation on and, a, and approval. And it's a two-step process, which and we will talk about later. So uh, just to kind of separate those things is this is gonna take so much longer to determine um, and it would mean a, a major restructuring of, of, of everything we've been working on so far. Um, but it's worthwhile asking the question of you all, uh, of this board, as well as our city executive team and our council, just to hear from you all. And if everybody's looking like we should do this when we will move forward, uh, staff is certainly supported, supportive of looking at a, at a higher level of um, approval process from this board. Okay. Thank you, Jen. So it sounds like the board uh, anyone jump in if I'm mischaracterizing. It sounds like we're, we're totally fine with you moving forward on doing more research, uh, bringing it to the council, seeing their thoughts, and then doing more research and coming back to us. If anyone has any objection to that, now's your time. Okay, great. 
you've gotten direction. Thank you. And now do you want to talk about the youth commission member, Emily? Um, I am happy to do that. I will tell you, I did not incorporate that into the presentation since oh, we I'm sorry. last month. And I felt like the board said, yes, please explore that. Um, yep. I'd be happy to open that discussion back up and hear more if you've thought about it in more detail and you have other questions you'd like me to explore. Or if, um, if Paul, I don't know if you heard that discussion and you have personal thoughts on it that you'd like to share with the group. Um, Nope, I, I was listening uh, last meeting. No, no, no additional thoughts. I, I thought you guys did a good rundown and uh, hopefully there can be a youth member. Yeah, my mistake. I thought we were talking about that again tonight. No, nope, we we talked about it at length, but um, yeah, go ahead, Carol. Do you have any more thoughts on that? Yeah, I think as a happy coincidence, um, Council Member McDonald's new appointee is a junior college student and I don't know if it's assumption or not. I don't know if staff has met with him, but I think we have a young member, not necessarily a teenager coming, but we have a younger member coming to our board in the near future, a voting member of the board coming to our board. All right, well, we'll incorporate board member Lopez into those future discussions. Um, okay. Great, then I think we, are we all done with our, our ordinance update presentation then? The only other thing I have is the next step slides. Um, Great, to go through. go ahead. Yeah, and go ahead. Go. <laughs> so, um, and some of this has already been alluded to, but the next steps are um, to take the ordinance and the bylaws to the city attorney's office, the city clerk's office, and then separately to the city manager's office. So those, all those offices need to review and be on board and feel comfortable before we take it forward to city council. Um, and then it will go to city council um, in a two-step process. The first step is to um, bring it forward as a report item and where we'll give a presentation um, and answer their questions. And as Jen mentioned, we'll, and you know, based on the way this presentation went, we'll split it up into here's what we want you to look at and make a decision on. Um, and here's things that we just would like your feedback on um, and we will move forward and, and bring it back in the future. Um, <clears throat> and then, so that, that happens at one council meeting and then at the next council meeting, the ordinance will be on the consent agenda and um, unless there are concerns from the public or the council, it will be um, approved just part of the consent agenda. And then it, goes into effect, I believe, the beginning of the next month. Um, so if if it's approved like in the middle of June, it wouldn't go in effect till July. Um, and then the, pro the next step after that is for the city code to be updated. And my understanding is that the city clerk um, provides city code updates to um, the agency that does that work once or twice a year. And so within the next year, the ordinance would be um, the city code, excuse me, would be updated to reflect the ordinance. Okay. <laughs> Great. Thank you for taking us through the steps. Yes, of course. Um, but after this meeting, since you have approved this recommendation, um, we will go ahead and move the language forward um, to the city attorney's office and the city clerk's office. Great. Yes. Okay. That's all I got. That's the, end of our, that's the end of our presentation. Okay. Thank you, Emily. Of course. Um, I did error in not taking public comment, so we should do that on our ordinance update. Um, I know this, this is thrilling stuff. So let's see if, do we have any public comments, host, on this agenda item? We have no hands raised at this time. Okay, good. I'm glad I didn't skip anyone. Um, so thank you for that presentation, Emily, and we've moved it forward. So looking forward to changing our quorum and maybe next month talking about the meeting start time or April. Okay, we'll do that soon to get it into that uh, final vote by the council. So we'll make sure that gets done. Okay, great. Thank you again for doing all that research. Um, and you might be doing more, so <laughs> we'll see. Uh, okay, thank you. 
So moving on to agenda item nine, that is our committee reports. And uh, the first one is 9.1, the update from the mayor's lunch. And we still have not done that yet. We of course have a new mayor. Um, so hopefully that'll, that'll get uh, restarted soon. So nothing there. Um, board member Quant, do you have an update from the waterways committee? We did have a meeting last month and reviewed a uh, fencing project in the northwest area of Santa Rosa, and there uh, is no meeting this month. Great. Thank you. Our next one is the update from the uh, governing document subcommittee. Uh, so, Jen, let me just ask you, can we disband the subcommittee now or how do we how do we do that? What I would recommend is we, we can disband it temporarily and when we bring the topics of the commission and other options back, um, we may need to reform that subcommittee. But for right now, my recommendation would be to, um, to put a hold on meeting. Okay. Um, do we do that through a vote or that's just done by the chair, right? The formation of it? The formation of it, yes, is by the chair's recommendation. So, um, yeah. So, I think if if there's no um, objections, we can postpone it. Okay. So we'll postpone that for now. If we need to come back, um, we would need a third member, so we would have to name a new person to it. Um, uh, if if everyone else wants to keep serving, so great. Okay, we'll suspend that for now, and if needed, we'll bring it back. Uh, so we can also form subcommittees, Paul. Just as a as a note, if you ever have some issue that would be outside of a normal meeting. Um, as the chair, I can I can form a subcommittee and designate other chairs of that subcommittee. So um, we did that for the ordinance update. We did did some good meetings. So thank you just for the last time to Carol and to our former board member, Terry, for helping with that. Uh, we were very efficient and got it done quick. So no need for it to exist anymore. Um, okay, great. Uh, on to number 10. Uh, Deputy Director Santos, do we have any written or electronic communications? Thank you, Chair Pitts, and no um, electronic or written communications as well. Great. Thank you, Jen. So uh, future agenda items. Are there any future items that any board member would like to see uh, at a meeting? Carol, please go ahead. At the risk of sounding like a broken record, um, if there are any updates on parks in progress, Dutch floor comes to mind, potentially Fremont, and I know there will be uh, hopefully great news on South Davis Park, but um, anything, parks, parks moving forward is always wonderful to hear about. Thank you. Any other future agenda items? Seeing none, okay. Um, thanks for that, Carol. Uh, and um, remember that our next meeting is in person. Um, so please review the, that information that was sent around about attendance. Uh, you can, there are ways you can miss the meeting, but they have to be very specific reasons. Uh, if you're doing a remote meeting, you have to basically let people into the premises as in your living room or your, condo in Hawaii or wherever you happen to be, you have to post the location and allow any member of the public to enter. Um, so please consider that very carefully before you, you decide to do a meeting not in person. Again, review the rules. Um, and before I adjourn the meeting, I did mention that graffiti cleanup from, the, from uh, Council Member Rogers. It's Saturday at 10 a.m. and uh, he sent out an email. So I just wanted to let folks know that. Um, Love to see you out there. So that is the end of our meeting for today. Um, we will be adjourning at 538 and the next meeting will be held on Wednesday, March 22nd, 4 p.m. Thank you, everyone. Have a good night. Thank you. Good night. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Good night. Thanks, Paul. Thanks. Good to meet you, Paul.